Another group of leaf beetles that we find on vegetables very commonly are ones that have names like rootworms or the cucumber beetles. Uh, these are all sometimes called diabrotocene beetles because they're in a, a, a group of beetles that are, include the diabrotica. Uh, and they're moderate-sized beetles, usually brightly colored. But there is a range in habits, uh, and, and two of them illustrate this. Two that I think are quite confusing to many uh, vegetable growers who, who encounter them because they look fairly similar, but they're very different in habit. Uh, the western corn rootworm and the striped cucumber beetle. Both of these are particularly common uh, in the Midwest, but uh, pretty much found east of the Rocky Mountains. They can be confused because the adult form is a beetle of about the same size that is generally yellow with some black markings. Uh, now we have two western corn rootworms on the left and we have a striped cucumber beetle on the right. And I think you can see that the striped cucumber beetle has much more clearly defined sharper uh, striping and it is a yellower yellow and blacker black. The western corn rootworm can have uh, black markings that are quite diffuse, sometimes even uh, covering most of the wings, so they're not really stripes. Anyway, we'll see more pictures of these. But they can co-occur on in a garden. Uh, they can co-occur in the same kind of flowers. So western corn rootworm is mostly a pest of corn, and it is the most important pest of corn in the corn belt. Uh, it, more insecticide is applied against uh, this insect, or has been historically, than uh, any other insect in, in U.S. agriculture uh, because corn is so extensively planted. Now, Western corn rootworm uh, has eggs that survive the season, between seasons, in the soil. So eggs are laid in summer and they are laid at the base of corn plants. The eggs don't hatch until the uh, uh, next spring. And the larvae feed on roots. So this is a rootworm. Uh, and in corn, they'll feed on corn roots. And, and this can be quite extensive, the, the pruning they do. And this is why so much attention is given to controlling this insect in, in the corn belt because of this root injury. Uh, if you have root injury, obviously the plants are going to be more susceptible to drought stress. They may have reduced yield. Uh, they also lodge, uh, meaning they'll fall over because they don't have a supporting root structure. And that can be a problem, particularly if you're mechanically harvesting. But anyway, so it's mostly root damage that we worry about with this insect. And this insect is the classic uh, example of where crop rotation can work. And, and why is this? Because the habits of this insect uh, limit it to laying eggs essentially in corn. Uh, and the eggs are the overwintering stage. So if you rotate a field so that it is not corn the next year, the eggs hatch and they don't have anything to feed on. So uh, this is not a mobile insect between seasons. It's an egg stage in, uh, between season in the field. So crop rotation has been a standard practice. You know, corn on corn creates problems. Corn followed by essentially any other crop uh, will cause the hatched larvae to starve out because they can only develop on the roots of corn. The adults are out in early July, active throughout the summer. They can be in corn. They can feed on the, the tassels of corn. They can clip the tassels. It's rare to see them do it severely, but if they if they intensely clip the tassels when it's still pollinating, uh, then that can cause poor seed set. So you have you know, fewer kernels and uh, incomplete ear fill. Uh, that's rare, but it, it does happen, and uh, this would be something that, that could be a cause if your, if your sweet corn does have irregular uh, seed set. The adults, though, are also on many other plants. I mean, they're not just on corn, and, and one common uh, place that they like to go to if they're available are squash blossoms. So the adults may feed on, on mostly the pollen of, of squash blossoms. Uh, and, and very commonly they'll be in these plants. They don't think, no, they're not a, a pest of squash, they're a pest of corn, but uh, the adults like to feed it. Various flowers and squash family plants are like that. 
which brings up the striped cucumber beetle. Now this is strictly a squash family type of, of insect, and it also may be in the same squash blossom as the western corn rootworm, which is why it sometimes can be confusing. Again, notice the picture in the uh, upper left. The, the yellow is yellow. Uh, they've got a nice dark head. The, the stripes are nice and clean. You can maybe even see little tiny indentations on the wing covers. Uh, but all stages of this uh, may feed on cucurbits, including the larvae. So winter is spent in the adult stage. So this is not something that is as well controlled with crop rotation. They, they leave the field. They'll be usually in the near vicinity of where there were cucurbit fruit at the end of the year. So uh, if you have a, a pumpkin field or something that you just leave out there all winter, they could be in that field. Or they, they uh, or cull pile. They, they will aggregate around cull piles. Uh, but they come out in spring. They're moderately good flyers, maybe a quarter mile or so, uh, half mile perhaps at the max. And in some areas where there's high numbers, the adults can be problems in seedlings. Now, this is this is the primary issue with this insect where I live. Uh, it's less commonly uh, a problem elsewhere where uh, you may not have quite as many uh, overwintering beetles as, as we do here. But anyway, they, they sometimes they're a problem on the seedlings. So you get zucchini coming up and they chew it right to the ground. Uh, at this time, they're also laying eggs. And the eggs are going to be laid at the base of, of uh, cucurbits, squash family plants. The larvae usually uh, cause no real damage. Um, they're feeding on the roots. Nobody really worries too much about the, the, the larvae of, of striped cucumber beetle as a, because they produce a lot of roots and they're just feeding on a couple side ones. Occasionally though uh, they may enter the base of the plant. This is a this is a habit that's more common with a, another insect I'll show in just a little bit called the spotted cucumber beetle. But uh, they sometimes will get into the uh, into the base of the plant. But mostly it's insignificant. We worry about the adults. Uh, Another rare case uh, where they can be problem is the larvae may move in to fruit of cucurbits that is resting on the ground, which most do. Melons in particular, musk melons, uh, which are fairly thin, have fairly thin skin. If they're lying on the ground uh, and the soil gets wet near harvest, that causes the larvae to move up in the soil. If it's saturated soil, they'll move higher, and then they might move into the into the rind of the fruit that's lying on the ground, and this causes wounds. This also causes entry courts for, for uh, fungi and bacteria, so the wounding by the larvae may be minor, but then the bacteria and the fungi that move into the wound uh, can essentially make the melon uh, worthless. It decays. So this is, again, mostly a problem when you're approaching harvest, the, the, the melons or uh, other, other plants are, are soft, they're lying on the ground, and high moisture forces them uh, up uh, into, the, into the fruit because the soil is, is saturated. Now, a big problem with striped cucumber beetle in the Midwest, we don't have it in the arid west, but in the Midwest, is that it is a vector of a pathogen. And this is the first of the cases where we're going to be talking about where an insect is important because it transmits a pathogen that produces a disease. And the disease that is produced by, uh, uh, that is transmitted from plant to plant uh, by striped cucumber beetle is called bacterial wilt. And it's a bacterium that overwinters in the gut of the uh, striped cucumber beetle. And in spring, they move to plants, they feed on the plants, they make little pits in the plants as they feed, and if they defecate, and the feces contain these bacteria and the, the get into those wounds, then the, the plant gets infected. The bacteria then moves in the xylem, plugs it, causes the plants to wilt very important pest in the Midwest. Uh, this is what most growers worry about with striped cucumber beetle, particularly in winter types of squash like uh, uh, pumpkins and the hard squash. This, by the way, is uh, mostly a problem on squash, uh, including pumpkins. Uh, it, Despite its name, cucumber beetle, it, it 
it, you find it on that plant uh, less commonly. Uh, and uh, melons uh, are, are also less commonly infested than, than would be the squash. There is two generations with this insect. So uh, after you've had that first spring generation that's laying eggs on the, the seedlings, you get adults coming out and they will feed and they will lay eggs again um, and uh, produce a second generation. Now most of the feeding at this time is, is on flowers, if there are flowers there, and on leaves, but there's, the leaves are huge so this is usually not nearly as, as big an issue. Uh, you can get uh, an overripe fruit. You'll at the end of the year you have you know a field of melons or squash or whatever, and leave them behind. You can find all sorts of these kinds of beetles in there. And this is a picture that shows an overripe watermelon, where almost every beetle in this picture, except the one with the arrow, are striped cucumber beetles. But the one on the with the arrow, that's a western corn rootworm. They'll they'll be in there too in the mix. So you know, try to make. You know, separate these out if you see them uh, out in the field. There are two that co-occur often. Late in the season, the adults concentrate in leftover fruit, uh, so uh, uh, this is a source that can cause them to continue to breed and develop, uh, so removing this fruit as soon as you can uh, will uh, limit the amount of breeding that will happen locally. Wherever you do dispose this though, uh, if again if you have a cull pile, that's where the beetles will be at the end of the season. They'll move there and then overwinter in and around that cull pile. So uh, this is an insect that can disperse moderate distances. Uh, so crop rotation, if it has to be about a half a mile uh, from a previous cucurbit planting or a previous or, or a source of where the cull pile was the previous year. So this is not an insect that is controlled by crop rotation where you move it from one field to an adjacent field. That can work for uh, western corn rootworm, can't work for striped cucumber beetle. Moderately good flyer, but you rotate more than your fields more than a half mile, uh, it, you're going to greatly reduce the risk of this move finding the new planting. They do overwinter that near those late season uh, sources of cucurbit fruits, squash family plants. So managing this fruit debris does affect the distribution and the number. So getting rid of the, the fruit after harvest promptly and uh, making sure it's destroyed or, or stored somewhere away from where you're going to be planting next year. You, you have a cull pile near where you're going to plant the next year, uh, you're asking for trouble. So just to review these two very common insects uh, and how they are different. So western corn rootworm would be on the left. And this is an insect that spends the winter as eggs in fields previously cropped to corn, whereas the striped cucumber beetle spends the winter as an adult in the vicinity of a previous uh, cucurbit squash family field. And so uh, these, this habit is why one can be controlled with rotation and the other can't. The larvae of corn rootworm develop on corn roots. The larvae of striped cucumber beetle develop on cucurbit roots. And there is only a single generation a, a year of western corn rootworm. And there are two of the striped cucumber beetle. Now there are some other kinds of related diabrotocene beetles uh, that feed on cucurbit family plants. And uh, th uh, the rest of these have uh, some spotting uh, or checkered pattern versus the striping of the two that I just showed you. They're all about the same size though. And the most important, and, and this is an extremely widespread insect, is called the spotted cucumber beetle. Uh, now this has a, a huge host range. So the larvae can develop on roots of many kinds of plants, not just cucurbits, but also legumes and grains, grasses. Uh, and the adults feed also on a wide range, range of plants. Uh, there, th this insect is one that actually has two accepted common names by the Entomological Society of America. So this is one that will have uh, be also known as the southern corn rootworm because of its importance uh, on corn uh, and it's generally more southern distribution compared to some of the other rootworms. So again all the uh, common names I'm using in this class are ones that are in that have been formally accepted by the Entomological Society of America and that is a project that we have this this class right here. So spotted cucumber beetle uh, is one that is very common east of the Rockies, but it only survives winter 
in the southern half of the region. So um, in my state, uh, I think it probably is regularly surviving in southern Colorado, but probably not northern Colorado. And if you get a little further north, uh, it disperses from southern areas. So this is an insect that can fly many hundreds of miles. So you're in Minnesota, you see this. It doesn't winter in Minnesota, but it may blow up from uh, somewhere down to the south, maybe Missouri or something, where it could survive through the winter. Uh, and there is actually a slightly different form, a different subspecies. If you're on the other side of the Rockies, you have the western spotted cucumber beetle. Uh, habits very, very similar uh, to the spotted cucumber beetle, but slightly different appearance. And this is what you'd find in the western uh, part of the U.S. The adults you will find on flowers of all kinds, not just vegetable crops, uh, but if it is in vegetable crops, it's particularly like squash family plants. Uh, but you have, you know, sunflowers and um, calla lily there. Uh, I mean, lots of, we, we could talk about spotted cucumber beetle as a not uncommon problem in a, in a flower garden as well as in vegetables. Um, it feeds on fruits pods of, of many vegetable plants. Uh, so the pictures on the left show them feeding on bean and the adult will feed on the leaves of bean but they may also feed on the pods of beans and as you can see some of my green beans were damaged uh, there on the left. Uh, very common on uh, cucurbit plants, particularly over mature fruit. So there's a spotted cucumber beetle with a striped cucumber beetle. Uh, got a little damage to eggplant one year uh, and that's shown in the, the lower right. So so they chew on uh, the developing fruit as well as the leaves and these injuries to the developing fruit are, are what we mostly worry about and when we're talking about vegetable and uh, food crop production. The larvae uh, do develop in the soil. Uh, you normally wouldn't see it. Uh, they feed on many different kinds of plants, as I mentioned before, not just cucurbits, but legumes and grasses, grains. Uh, so there's um, uh, larvae associated with peanut production in the southeast, and uh, in the lower left, there's one in a developing corn seedling. Um, it also will develop in, in cucurbits. That picture I showed you before of striped cucumber beetle, that could also be the spotted cucumber beetle uh, in those roots. And these are also a rindworm. Uh, these are another uh, insect that uh, the larvae uh, that normally are feeding on the roots, if you get high moisture near harvest when the fruit is uh, getting ripe, they may move into it and uh, cause wounding that then allows entry cords. This insect in the southern United States reproduces pretty much continuously, and there are um, some risks uh, associated with this with certain practices, and one of them is, is winter cover crops. Um, uh, winter cover crops are, have a lot of value for many kinds of situations, but, but this, is, this is very risky, particularly if you include legumes in your winter uh, cover crop in the south where this insect overwinters. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, living up in Illinois or Wisconsin or Massachusetts or someplace, but uh, if you're in the southern half of the United States where this overwinters, uh, they could develop high populations in that winter cover crop. Then you t till that in and you could have uh, large numbers of uh, adults emerging from that field. Uh, the last ones I want to talk about are a little more minor. Um, there is in the extreme southeast part of the United States uh, the banded cucumber beetle. You might see this. Um, this is a more tropical species, but it does get into the southeast part of the United States. Um, again, very wide host range, uh, similar to the spotted cucumber beetle. And here is a, a, a buffalo gourd not buffalo burr, but buffalo gourd, uh, a wild perennial gourd that we see out in this part of the country. And uh, sometimes in the summer, they will be covered with spotted cucumber beetles, as you can see. But there's also another one that we uh, now call the checkered melon beetle, that black and white one. And the checkered melon beetle is uh, associated with many cucurbits. We see it mostly damaging to melons, uh, particularly musk melons. Pretty limited distribution. Again, this is the southwestern states, so Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, uh, you, you'd you see this insect. Uh, the rest of the country is spared this. Um, 
but uh, probably mostly ranges with that buffalo gourd, that native um, perennial cucurbit that, that is found in this part of the country. So we have these various leaf beetles. Uh, they're all about the same size. You find them on different kinds of plants, and, and they can be a little bit difficult to distinguish. So let me just show you a few more pictures here. Um, here we have uh, a picture of a pair of western corn rootworm adults in a squash blossom. And we can see the one on the left has more distinct striping than the one on the right, but they're both western corn rootworm. Here we see a checkered melon beetle on a ripe melon along with a western corn rootworm. In the lower left here we have a spotted cucumber beetle and a striped cucumber beetle on the same plant. And there are other striped uh, insects. So one we're going to talk about in the next section is called the tomatillo leaf beetle. So uh, again you might have to look a little closely. There are some that look so similar and uh, uh, but uh, a very common group of insects, uh, these diaprotocene beetles.